Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. This thing, <laughs> there's just so much in my heart. Ah, that men will hear the truth and change and repent and walk in the truth. Mm. Can we call for that deliberate? Are you ready? Because see, this is the last broadcast for the month of June. <laughs> Praise God. I don't know if we're going to continue next month or if the Lord's going to tell us something else to do next month. Well, we didn't even finish this thing about the covenant. It's that big. It's that big. So are you ready? Join me now in faith and say, Father, as the month comes to an end, I demand my daily bread. And I receive it from you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You know, the Lord said something. He said at the beginning of this month, he said he's taking, using this month to prepare us for the seasons ahead. And that's why I've been sharing on this covenant with you. Listen, the seasons ahead, they are not easy times. It is truly those who know their God that will be strong. And you see, even in tough times, there are those who will still be doing exploits. Now, let me tell you something about exploits. Exploits is not how many crowd you're controlling. Exploits is how you are swimming against the tide in comfort of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So where everybody said, you know, you know, he said, when men are cast down, you will say there is a lifting up. Those are men who know they are God. So why am I sharing these things with you? So that you will know your God. Understand the heart of your father. I was sharing something with you yesterday. Let's continue from there. Praise God. Matthew chapter 25. 25. Now I told you what he said to the righteous. That the sheep on the right hand. Then he comes to those who are on his left. And he says, then he will say to those on his left. And depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry. Mm. And you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in naked and you did not clothe me sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Brothers and sisters, he did not say you lied. You communicated, you fornicated, you, you served, you served idols, you cheated, you were mean. He didn't say that. Now, this is the judgment that he's going to judge everyone. Pastor Tupo, what, what are you talking about? Do you mean he, he's not going to ask me about the, the, the wrong things I did? You mean he's not going to open the book? You know, you know, all those things we think that he's going to, you know, open the screen and show you, ah, the first time you told a lie, the first time you committed fornication, to see, see your life, see your life. No, sir. God has no time for that. Ah, what do you mean? So we can actually behave the way we like? I will tell you something. <laughs> see, when you don't understand things, you, you, you go. Now, someone will read this and jump to a conclusion that, ah, so all these things that they are holding us from doing, is not, ah, so the only thing we need to do is to be given to the poor and, and go do prison ministry and, and we'll be fine. Is that all? Listen, let me tell you something. There are those who will give to the poor and they will still go into the lake of fire. You see, because now it is said like this and you think it is natural. There is something you miss in every teaching Jesus taught. What you miss about the teachings of Jesus is that they are all the demonstration of the teachings of Jesus. They are all powered by the Holy Spirit. Meaning it is the Holy Spirit that directs everything Jesus has taught. Anything that is not done by the Holy Spirit, guess what's going to happen? He can never accept it. Now, this is the reason he said, he, he could have simply said, you know, when he said to the righteous one, enter into the city, he could have said, because you gave to the hungry, you clothed the naked, you visited those in prison. He could have said that, but he didn't. He said, this is where understanding comes. Because you don't generalize what he said. 
you must be careful to observe what he said. He said, I was hungry and you give me food. I was naked and you clothed me. I was in prison and you visited me. You know, is it everybody you give to that will mean you mean you're giving to Jesus? No, he will actually come to you. So you, you can be busy giving, you can be busy doing prison ministry, you can be, but if you don't meet Jesus in the process, your works will be counted for nothing. So how do we know Jesus? Aha! Uh -huh. Go back to everything I've been teaching you about tithing. What have I been teaching you about tithing? Number one, God expects you to tithe after he gives to you. So before you tithe, you must have. And tithing ensures that you have something to give. And that thing you have to give is the Lord's. Why do you think Jesus will send people to hell because they did not give what belongs to them no sir no listen what is mine is mine if i choose not to give it to you you can't judge me for it but if you have given me something now you understand why malachi said will a man rob god so when jesus was saying that i came to you hungry you did not give me food i tell you the truth before God. He was referring to using his money that was in your hand. And because you did not give it, you stole his money. I told you the other day when that the boy said people who don't tithe will go to hell. Say they will not enter heaven. You think it was a joke? You think it was a joke? Here's the thing that qualifies people to enter into life or to go to the lake of fire. And what is it about? Titan. Ah, but he didn't say Titan. He didn't say Titan. Continue your ignorance. No, continue your ignorance. I've taken time teaching you step by step, step by step from the blessing, the covenant he made with Abraham. What's that covenant? Through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And how did that come about? God says, okay, you know what you're going to do? You're going to be setting aside 10% of everything I give to you. And then first it says, now, this one you have acquired by yourself, give it out. See? Give it out. Okay, sir. He gave it out. And that's why you see the disciples, everything they acquired by themselves before they came to Christ, they gave it out. And that's why we don't have committed Christians today. Why? We don't have people whose hearts are on the Lord. Jesus said, where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. What, what do we have today? Your mind is there. And they, they, there are even pastors that are commanding their brethren to go struggle outside, to look for job so that they will survive. Brothers and sisters, that was never the plan of God. That was never the plan of God for you to go get job. Let me show you something. Mm. Mm. Ephesians chapter 4. Ah, you come on, my British. Let me start from verse 25. Please follow me. Therefore, put it away line. Let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Okay? Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Now look at verse 28. Let him who stole still no longer but rather let him labor working with his hands 
that which what is good that he may have something to give to him who has need mm. it was never about your survival Notice he said, the one who stole should steal no more. Why was he stealing? I bet he wasn't stealing to give to people to eat. He was stealing for himself. But then he says, don't steal again. Instead of stealing, meaning if it is that bad that you don't know what to do, you don't know how to activate your faith, you don't just know what to do. If it is that bad, go get a job. That's what Paul was saying here. If it is that bad that you have to steal, don't steal. Instead of stealing, go get a job. And when you get a job, a good job, something that is honest, honest work, whatever it is, maybe a manual job that you have to do with your bare hands or whatever job that is good. So don't go join fraudulent people and say you're doing a job. No. It says, go get an honest, good job. And when you get that job, you're going to be paid a salary, which David called bread of sorrow. Yes. Yes. But when you get it, or Jesus called it unrighteous mammon. You see, whatever you are paid out there is called unrighteous mammon. When you get it, what did he say you should do with it? He says, so that now that you have something, you will have to give to the one who lacks. Paul says, go get a job so that you will have an opportunity. I'll tell you the truth of what Paul was saying here. So that you will have an opportunity to tithe. You will have something to give. Mm. You see, <laughs> now I've always told you this. Go before the Lord and say, Lord, what's this thing about? This thing called tight. If you need to fast and pray about it, you need to. Because you're hearing it from me, you're thinking, ah, uh, uh, go before the Lord. Take time. Let him teach you. When you walk, you get some money. The most important part of that money you get is your tithe. And it's just 10%. It's just, oh, it, it's too small. 10%. I, I'd rather give God everything. No problem. Go and sell everything you have and give. But make sure you keep God's part. Because see that his part, he will come for it. And when he comes for it, make sure you have it with you. Because if you spend it, he will come hungry and you will have nothing to give. And let me tell you something also. When he comes and you go and take from another source to give to him, he will not accept it. Oh, 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 you remember Jesus when he was to go to Jerusalem. He didn't just take a random donkey. He didn't take a random donkey. He told the disciples, go into the, the city. You will get to a certain junction. You will see a cut that is tight, which no man has ever ridden. That was tight that was kept there. So Jesus didn't just take anybody's thing. He took what belonged to him. <laughs> you see, the same way God com I, uh, the same way God commanded John the Baptist to be baptizing people in the river Jordan. And one day there is one that will come. So the whole purpose of, of going to Jordan to baptize is to wait for Jesus. And Jesus came. It's the same way Moses commanded the children of Israel concerning Titan. He said, There is the tithe that you will bring out of your gate and you will keep it there. And then the priest or um, the fatherless or the widow, they will come and take to their food. He gave them that command because Jesus was going to come to receive that tithe one day. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you see, he, that fellow who kept that tithe, those, that, those donkeys, that fellow who kept them there, it is recorded for him that Jesus came for the ass and he got it. 
That's why no man has ever ridden on it before. So they didn't even ride it to go and keep there. No, they dragged it because it belonged to the Lord. I pray your, your understanding be open. So it's the same manner that he's commanding us to tithe today. So when I tell you people who tell you not to tithe, they are walking by the spirit of the Antichrist. They know nothing about Jesus. They don't know the end. So we are busy tithing as God commands us. We are busy, you know, we, we, we receive money. You know, we, we, we bless the Lord. We take out his tithe and then we keep it for him. Guess what? He comes for it. He will show up one day. He said, hey, I, I want you to take this amount of my money and give to so-and-so. You have it and you obey him. It's on record. I told you, it's not every poor person you give to that is Jesus. But there is one you will give to that will be Jesus. And Pastor, I can just be randomly giving. You can randomly give and miss him. So Titan and the voice of the Lord, they are connected. The one Jesus is going to talk about is the one that the Holy Spirit commanded you about. Now, this is where sin and iniquity affects people's lives. Lying, cheating, fornication, adultery, um, um, idol worship, all these things, they affect your sensitivity and your hearing. Mm. So, the day Jesus was going to visit you, and that day you've been mixed in sin, and even when his voice comes to you, you have no strength in you to obey him. You don't know the hour he's going to come. And I'm not saying him coming, you know, like say, I've come, oh, come and meet me. Before that coming, he will come to you. He will come to you. I've told you this before. Jesus is so alive that he can walk into this earth and walk out without taking any permission from anyone. So when he says, I came, I was hungry, and you gave me food. Yeah. When did we do that? Hey, remember that time you did it for that least brother? Yes. That was it. You think he meant as long as you did it for all these people, I take it that you are doing it for me. No, sir. Jesus will visit you. You mean Jesus will visit all of us? Do you think it's anything to him? Oh, no, you think it's anything to him? You don't know, even now he has started visiting. He's visiting. He's coming for his money. He's coming for his money. He's coming for his money. And when you don't give him, See, so you didn't give him because you stole it. You didn't give him because you were blinded not to see. Abraham recognized him every time he showed up because he was a righteous man. When we tell you be righteous, when we tell you run from sin, it's so that your eyes will be clear to see. Your ears will be sharp to hear him. When you spend all your time in evil practices, he is going to come and you will not hear his sound. He will speak to you. You will be too ashamed to rise up and obey him. Because you look at yourself and say, see me, I'm wallowing, wallowing myself in iniquity. See that? This is how sin affects you. He's not going to ask you. He's not going to ask you. You committed fornication. He did this. And that's why, you know, that's why it looks like even today, it looks like, you know, a lot of people get away with things, you know, after all, I'll ask God for forgiveness now. Forgiveness has never been the problem. But don't miss him. And Satan senses when he's come. Jesus can be visiting you today. And Satan will whisper to your house, go to that girlfriend's house. Go, 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 go and commit fornication. Go and commit adultery. And you yield to it. 
And in the place of adultery, Jesus comes and he knocks, but you cannot open. You cannot open. Because when he's knocking, he says, No, oh, don't disturb me, don't disturb me, don't disturb me. I pray that will never be your portion. I pray. You know, like we, we always sing that song, when he calls me, I will answer. Why? Because I'll be somewhere walking for my Lord. I pray that your life, you know, I will not close without sharing this scripture to you. Look, look, chapter 12. Ah, no, 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 no. I'm going to show you this scripture. Look. Shagado bradike sabidad. Mm, mishku bradakad. Luke chapter 12. Mm. Verse 35. Haya. It said, Let your waist be guarded and your lamp burning. After you've sold everything and given, now you're set, your heart is one with the master. That's all you can think about. Then he says, let your waist be guarded. Be guarded with what? Paul says, guard your waist with truth. Let your waist be guarded and your lamp burning. And you yourselves be like men who wait for their master. For when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, that they may open to him immediately. You know how it is when you're in the room doing something bad? And there's a knock on the door. Ah! Hey! Daddy's here. Mommy's here. Oh, ah! Hey! Hey! Nobody must catch me. You, you, you now start tidying up everything, tidying up. You're wasting time. But Jesus said, live your life in such a way that the moment he comes and knocks, yes, he will open that door. That's how he wants us to live. Brothers and sisters, a little moment of sin can destroy a whole lot. You will miss the day he comes. You may have his tithes with you, but the day he comes for it, you are not available to give it. It's he will record it that I came hungry. You did not give me food. May the Lord give you understanding and help you and bring you to the place where you walk in this truth. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Listen. On Sunday night, Sunday is 31st, Sunday is 30th, sorry. On Sunday night, we're going to be having our all-day um, prayer and fasting meeting where we pray according to the watches. I invite you for that meeting. The, the details are on your screen. It's a Zoom meeting. Plan for this. We're going to start at 12 midnight and then we'll pray throughout the first at every watch or from 12 midnight every three, three hours. We will be praying and getting ourselves in tune for the next month, which is the next quarter of the year, um, another quarter of the year 2024. I pray God will carry you into the seasons that are ahead. God bless you and I love you so much. That's why I bring this message to you. God bless you.